All right, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Monique, owner of Ashley Jimmy Tummy. Um, this is a clip on, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is episode two of I've, the I've Noticed podcast, which is basically exactly what it is. I've noticed a lot of things, but um, as always, uh, go to my all my business pages, uh, subscribe to the Ashley Jimmy Tummy um youtube page go to my instagram ashley monique 843 go to my uh ashley jimmy tummy catering on facebook now you can also go to the i've noticed uh podcast page on facebook and ashley jimmy tummy dot com everywhere but um and we have a special guest whitney miss whitney yeah. Hello. So I will also post her social media handle uh, wherever she would like for y'all to follow her if she choose to. <laughs> Some weird people. And then, as always, we have Courtney. And we got Miss Kiki. All right. So, we're going to go straight into this. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be because we have a, a guest host and I'm happy. I'm super happy she's here. And also, um, if anybody else is interested in coming up here, you know, um, sharing your opinions, you know, some thought provoked, you know, because we're not always correct. These are just our thoughts and our opinions on things on certain topics. And, um, just inbox me or either one of the ladies, either Courtney or Kiki, and um, they'll let me know. But, okay, our first topic tonight is... And I'm excited. About to come in strong, Ashley, with this one. I know, I know, because I, 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 I be wanting these questions. Listen, like, putting these <laughs> questions together is like doing a mixtape or an album. Like, if you like rap, if you like R&B, you like country, it's like, <laughs> I, I feel the pressure. I be feeling like, okay, no, this question need to, because we can transition into this, and it got to go smooth. Like, it's, it'd be that serious. Yeah. And it only yeah. be like three to four questions, but y'all don't <laughs> Y'all, y'all don't get it. But uh Courtney, I think this was your question. Um yes, I've had this debate literally on Facebook not too long ago, and I keep seeing the same meme over and over again. I'm so okay. tired of it because it's so stupid. But yeah, that, that was my question. You worded it perfectly though. Yeah, I know when you had inboxed me about it, um, I was like, okay, I gotta kind of these people are so disrespectful. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. So the question is, can a black man be loved correctly, correctly without having financial stability, AKA hood wise, if he ain't got no money, uh, he ain't getting no honey. <laughs> like, like if he ain't got no money, like what you talking to me for, you know, which, um, is very interesting. Um, so who would like to, Courtney, would you like to, you know, do the honors or what about this question? Did it confuse you? Did it aggravate you? Like, what, what's your thoughts and opinions? It aggravated me because, okay, so when I had this argument on Facebook not too long ago, like, there was men on my post literally saying, like, this ain't true. It's not possible. But we see it every day. <laughs> we see it every day. We see men who ain't nothing but drug dealers or, you know, not even drug dealers. Like, they just don't do <laughs> nothing. Be sitting on the corner every freaking day, you know, not doing anything with their lives, regardless of potential and all stuff like that. And women are in love and fighting over them because of baby mom drama and everything else like that. Like we see it every day. So to say that a black man can't be loved without being financially stable, I think is untrue for one. But I mean, we all have our limits, right? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let me make sure I, I understand what you're saying. Let me follow you first. Okay, you're saying you don't believe that it's true. You you believe that. Okay, you lost me at the drug dealer. <laughs> okay, like, you're, <laughs> you're saying because they because you see them get money and girls flock to them that you think that they are love. Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the ones that don't are not getting money. Like they're still finding relationships somehow. Yeah, like the people that are like the guys that are not financially stable like they don't really have um steady income they don't have they're not going out here grinding every day they're not right. thriving they're not doing any of that and they still are in relationships and they still yet even have women honestly taking care of them like you're not in a position to do anything but yet you still have this woman who is like you don't have the money for a date she's gonna pay for it 
you can't go pick up your kids and spend time with them. So she's going to go pick up the kids and spend time with them. That's a woman loving you without you having financial stability, regardless of why she's doing it. I don't know. She probably sees the potential or maybe one day, you know, he'll get it right or whatever the case may be. We see it all the time where guys are in relationships with girls and the woman is the one that's, you know, out here grinding and, and getting to the money and all of that. And maybe when he gets on his feet, you know, then the roles may reverse and it's like, okay, now he's in a place to take care of her, but we see it all the time. So that question that I see on social media aggravates me a lot too, because it's like all of a sudden now, we men have standards. a problem. Yeah, yeah like, men have like, a problem I'm not with doing financial it. No, I'm not yeah. doing it. Now all of a sudden you have a problem with financial stability, but honestly speaking, like the guys that I know, the, the men that are able to provide financial stability, you don't hear them saying, oh, I won't be loved correctly because, you know, I got money or whatever the case may be. All the guys that I know, if they're able to provide financial stability, there's no question or anything of them saying, oh, this woman is going to use me for money. It's like, you know, you need in a relationship. I, I mean, I don't necessarily think in a relationship, but in a marriage, like you need money, regardless of your relationship or not, you need money to survive. So nobody wants to be out here struggling on their own but then if you're with somebody else like dang both of us can't be struggling <laughs> at all like that's what, like i have this like, thing about i know because on the last episode courtney was like ashley you need to lower your ass but anyway <laughs> so I, i've lowered my uh, my list or whatever i was like just have a transportation like both of us can't <laughs> be on a bike like and i say that you know trying to be funny but my thing is like uh the reason why it's important for you to have transportation because first off you're grown like you need to get to work but also just in case if i have i'm having car trouble i can call my man i shouldn't have to call whitney courtney keista i shouldn't have to call y'all especially because with me i have the type of attitude and mouth i'm like why are you calling me why are you waking me up early and you laying there with a guy like your man is supposed to like there's just things that you're supposed to have but i totally agree I think, Whitney, going back to what you were saying, um, like, it's this new thing of why women are saying this now, when we know we got aunts, we got cousins, we got, we got, we know, we got friends that take care of these guys, that take care of these men, and have been doing so, but I think where it comes from is this new rhetoric come from women that are more educated women that are like you said like the pro well, mm -hmm. primary breadwinners like now they're like which they call it bougie or uppity you know you know the memes where you like the aunt with the, the fur and the shades on now like i think it's those women that are having these standards which ain't nothing kind of wrong with it but you no, know it's just wrong. i guess it's just like being being sick and tired like tired of being sick and tired like you know they're like oh i refuse uh, you're not driving, you're not dropping me off at work. Like, yeah. I think it's like those type of women, like, you don't have a car, you're not using my car to drop me off at work and just ride around doing what you want to do all day. Even if it's like you, we did it for so long, like, you, we've accepted struggle love for so long, it's just like, now we're at the point, <laughs> like, she, struggle love. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, like, I think it's, like, almost, like, intimidating for some guys, because, like, now, when you put that, put that standard on them, it's like, now you gotta level up. Like you, you've known for so long that women had to be so dependent on guys for, for financial stability. So like now that it's like, I can make it on my own. Like if you're coming and adding to me, like I need you to meet me at this level if we're going to go. I think like the guys may be a little threatened by that. It's like, dang, like, you know, I shouldn't have to level up or I shouldn't have to do all of that. You know, you should love me for me. And it's like, Ooh, at the same time, okay. well, we need to, <laughs> I need to go back and write that. We need to talk about that. That topic, love me for me. What is that? Yeah, right. and then it's just like at the same time for financial stability, like, yeah, you can be loved correctly, but don't get it twisted. Yeah, you can be loved correctly, but if you don't want anybody to have so much emphasis on your financial stability, then you have to be bringing something else to the table besides your money. Like, if that's all you have is your money, no, you are not going to be loved correctly. Like, right. you and have to have something else. That's the so. thing, I think. I think when you ask the question itself, I'm saying it is possible, but a lot of women have standards now. Well, not now have standards, but are... Yeah. Or they're serious about it now. Not they're accepting serious. what we used to accept anymore. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, they, I mean, of course, people have their limits on how, you know, low on the financial scale you want to go. But I just think that women are being a lot smarter about it now. But it is possible. 
<laughs> it is possible for um to be loved without money. It's just not we just choose not that. to have struggle love. We don't we and, don't struggle love. And it's not like a certain amount. Like it's not like when people we say financial stability or want somebody with money, we're not saying like somebody has to have a whole wealth of money and has to like wine and dine and do all of these things. Right, right. But just being a financial a uh, uh, stable position where okay, we I want to go out on a date. You can take me out on a date. We want to go somewhere. We do something. You can do that. We're not in debt. We're not. We don't have debt, and we owe this person. You owe that person, and you're living paycheck to paycheck. You you know you gotta you know, stretch out a dollar for, you know, a long time. That's what we mean when we say financial stability, not that you have to have all of this money, but just being comfortable. Like you should want that for yourself. And when you get somebody else, you should want the same thing. Right. And let, let me tell you my quick experience. Listen, when I try to, I'm, I'm nowhere near a financial advisor. I've just been broke before. I'm in, listen, I, I like to do the little joke of where I was NBA young boy before NBA young boy. Like I'm never going broke again. I'm sorry. I'm not, it's not happening, you know? Yeah. But so when I meet guys and I'm like, Ooh, like I uh, try to help them, you know? And I'm like, well, maybe you should save or do you have a 401k or maybe you, you should do this. And you know what I, the feedback that I get, I'll say six out of 10 will say, Oh, you, you, are you pocket watching? Like, I, why are you trying to tell me what to do with my money? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this is crazy. Like, it's not like I'm asking you to buy me like a bag or some weave or something. I'm like, I'm literally, I get my hair and nails done. I'm literally saying like, maybe you should, or have you ever thought about, you know, so you won't have to work all the way until you're like 67 years old to get your social security early. Cause I don't want to see you in Walmart like that. You know, it's especially like people who you care about, but. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Pista, what about you? What do you? What do you think? Like, um, can you love a black man without him having financial stability? Um, you're the, you the five dollar girl. <laughs> Remember, she's like, oh, she's yeah. like <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's a side piece. Five dollars. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for the side piece. But. <laughs> uh, but listening to you guys though, and then also like reading the question myself and mm-hmm. like just sitting here thinking at the same time. So I gotta bring Michelle in just a tad. Okay. Just a little bit. So we gotta bring Michelle in. All right. So the thing about that is the they can be they can be loved right. Um, because it's depending. Are you financially um unstable? Because you choose to be? Are you financially unstable because you're having to now walk a road that people don't believe it, but there are people that walk a broke road uh, for a purpose, for a destiny? Um, or are Give you an example? Point, um, like, do they quit their job because they have a passion or career? Like, I want to be a rapper. <laughs> I want to be a rapper. I got to go in the studio. I got to do this mixtape. Like this is my passion, no. this is my dream. When I say purpose, when I say purpose and destiny, I mean spiritual wise. Okay. You have you have people that go through many different things, people that have been homeless that are now no longer homeless. But a lot of times we go through stuff at the same time so we can appreciate what we're gonna get. So it all works hand in hand and it's all depending on how or if you're willing to understand. Um, because there's a difference in between a guy that want to sit home and be taken care of and a guy that is sitting home and trying to make it and trying to do. So it's just knowing the difference. It's just knowing what you have, who you have, because see, a lot of times people don't think about this either. If they're, if it, if they're going through the struggle right now, to get where Michelle, you know, bring Michelle in where God wants them to be, you sticking with them gets you a reward too. So that's why you, you kind of have to be careful how you pick and choose it. Because now, me personally, I have nothing against a, a guy that want to be a stay at home dad and the woman want to go to work and do it. Like, I have nothing against that as long as you are doing what you would expect the woman to do if she was a stay-at-home mom like you can't just be there like you gotta 
you got to do the works too. You you got to cook, you got to clean, you got to make sure the kids straight and stuff like that. I mean, I may help you because I know it could be tiring or it could be a lot, but um, but at the same time, it is possible. I really believe it is possible. You just got to know the difference. You got to know who you're working with, who you got, where they standing at, if they trying or if they just right. they want to be like an ex of mine and quit their job and and I tell you no, I can't pay nothing. Well, I, well, I think that should be a conversation. Okay, let, okay. What you oh, said is like two different things. Like that sounds like you're already in a relationship with somebody, and then y'all make the decision. Y'all sit down together and have that discussion. Like, okay, well, I make more money, and so you're gonna stay home and do that. But I think so, Courtney. Is it going into a relationship, like a brand new relationship or a situation where you know he doesn't have a job or you know he's like? minimum wage okay so that's what i was about to ask Kisa. i wanted to know her opinion okay. on it. But, um for me i do have a a limit like there has to be okay so everyone goes through hard times everyone you know some people start out on a struggle you know it's hard to get to where they want to be blah 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 i do have a limit i need a legitimate reason of why you are where you're at i know we sprinkled this like on the group chat when we were talking about when we when i first brought it up right like, you could be working from pay to pay, you know, paycheck to paycheck and maybe staying with your mama, but I need a legitimate reason. Like I'm in school, so I'm doing this to do, you know, like I need a legitimate reason of why I need to see someone actively building towards where they want to go. Because that, then that shows me that this person has ambition. This person is actually trying to do something with their life. And that's the type of person that I want to be with, but I need to have a legitimate reason. But if you just, if you just, you know, doing the living a paycheck to paycheck, but you're not, you know, you're not actively trying to better your own life to do something better for you, I, I, I wouldn't be with that. I couldn't do that. And then you know what they consider that? They call that money hungry, a gold digger. And I'm like, how in the world? If I was a girl, I'm gonna be telling me you. to keep us in the corner. Oh, she a gold digger. So now you don't want to be a, you don't want to be seen as a gold digger. So now you can't mention nothing about money and wanting financial stability because oh my gosh, they're gonna think I'm a gold digger if I say something about money. Right. I'm created by men. Like who who does that? Like Listen, like that they just try not. to put it off like money is not important. Like yes, money is not everything, but of course you need money to survive. Like things cost you start trying to have kids kids you know you have to provide these things for them so it's just like the same thing kind of all in together it's just like we're not saying you have to have a whole bunch of money but if you you can be loved correctly even from what Kisa was saying even about like just being able to try or your ambitions like you're bringing something else to the table yeah I may not be where I want to where he wants to be um you know with his finances or where you want him to be with his finances but if you see that he's trying you see that he's getting up every day, working towards whatever his goal is, whether that's something he has a passion in or if he's going out applying for jobs. If he doesn't have work, you see him going out applying for jobs or doing whatever he needs to do, then that's something that you're bringing to the table outside of that. Because you know somebody, you have somebody who's ambitious, who's going to keep trying, who's going to be supportive of you. Like if you're the breadwinner and you know, like Keith was mentioned, like if that the woman is out and she's working, you're going to make sure that when she comes home, you know, maybe you already have dinner cooked or maybe you, um, you know, have run a bath or whatever the case may be. You're bringing something else because you may be lacking in one area. And I think that goes for women, too, or, you know, whatever area you're lacking in, you try to make up for it in other areas. So it just creates balance. Yeah, I would really like to talk to a stay at home dad. <laughs> like if anybody watching, like if your dad, your uncle or somebody, you know, like <laughs> I would really love to like talk to a stay at home dad. That would be good. Yeah. Like how did you transition yeah. into that? Like, cause I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't feel that way now, but maybe like a couple years ago, I considered that. Like I was like, I make a good bit of money. I was like, I, I would, um, uh, I thought that's what I wanted, I would consider, because of the guys that I was talking to, like, it wasn't, I don't know, I don't know why you be keeping booking into rappers, or I just, <laughs> that girl right there, but listen, I have a question for Courtney right quick, though, because you, Courtney, you said, um, as far as, like, there has to be a reason, right, a legitimate reason, okay, so then let me ask you this question, um, what if there is no explanation? That's not acceptable. So, no, wait, 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 wait now. 
what if there is no explanation the reason why i say that the reason why i say that okay if you have this man that he is trying he done put in 50 applications all of them got turned down he done went out he do side hustles this here this there but he cannot explain to you why nothing will happen for him is that still unacceptable that's I don't there there's there has to be more to it because that that would have to be an explanation like I'm trying to find a job but I can't find one that would be the explanation because I could interject it on Courtney's behalf uh first <laughs> off um I would not now see this is where he's probably gonna get upset with me about because now I want to see well what are you applying for because if you are you applying for jobs that you're not qualified for like are you no. you know that's what I'm because I do the COVID I've been unemployed, so I've read the description and where I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do that. And then they'd be like, they'll let you know you're not qualified for this, you know? So if you're putting in 50 applications and you're still not getting it, and then let's say you he is applying for the jobs that he, like basic, like uh, high school diploma, GED or whatever, and two years of customer service. Okay, let's say he has that. But then I would go with, let's do a mock interview. Like, it's something with his interview skills where he's getting his foot in the door. He's still not application. He's going to the interview, but there's something still not there. So I think Keith, what it boils down to is if he's willing to ex accept, if he's willing to accept me uh, paying all these bills and making sure the roof is over our heads and stuff, hopefully the man, because you know, they have a lot of pride and everything and ego. Hopefully he's willing to accept my help. It's like, well, babe, let me, let's, 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 what's what's going on like let's do the mock interviewer then that's when i have to call you up and he has to go to church with you and somebody <laughs> all that stuff added on also right. that matters too like because like like she was saying there's not a reason he's doing the applications and stuff well if he's you know telling me exactly what's going on like i don't have good interview skills for some reason every time i get right. my foot in the door i get shut back out like I, that's a, like, I need a legitimate, there has to be a reason of why you're not working. So I don't see like, if like, if I ask, like, I'm like, so what do you do for your living? They're like, well, I'm a, I'm in between jobs now. And then I, my follow up question, like, okay, well, what did you do the last time you had a job? When was that? And if they're like, that was three years ago. I need more than just, I'm just yeah. in between jobs. <laughs> and it go it goes back it connects to something so just like with me with my students so I work in higher education at a college and I help students get internships and you know the students will be like you know I've been applying for these internships and I've been getting calls back and I've been to interviews but they just haven't called me back I keep going and I, you know I'm, I'm applying and I'm getting interviews but they just not selected me and it's like of course you sent your resume so obviously you're qualified it's something that you're doing in an interview that's not coming over well to say like, hey, I'm qualified. So then you have to go back and do mock interviews with them because it's something, there's no, it it, it just can't be like you're applying for 50 jobs or a whole bunch of jobs and nothing comes available. And if that is the case, then you have to go back and assess like, okay, I'm applying. What am I, am I filling out the application correctly? Because a lot of times it's that, you know, they're not filling out the application correctly. Or like yeah. Ashley said, they're applying for jobs that they're not qualified, qualified for. for. You know, so it's, it's, okay. I think it's, it's working with the person as well. So it's not just, okay, them telling you, okay, yeah, I'm applying for jobs, but it's, it's helping, not just saying, oh, I expect for you to get a job. You need to have yeah. a job by next week. You know, you're working with them at the same time. Okay, you apply for the jobs. How can I help and assist? You need me to look over your resume? Maybe if it's not even a resume thing, you need me to call somebody to connect. I know my family member, XYZ, working well then, and maybe they can, you know, get you in or something yeah. like that so it's always about like working with the person not just them on their own doing everything and right. they, they gotta be the that man that black man has to be willing to do that and i and i already know you know we kind of have a little sass sometimes sass and you know so i would try to be very like black women who are watching this i will try to be in this may be your situation or you may bump into this but be very gentle with your words when you're talking to him because he's already feeling down He's already right. feeling down. Please don't belittle him. You know, do something nice, extra for him, you know, um, because he's gonna need it, you know. But um, but yeah, just just let him know that you're working with him and not against him, you know, and you yeah, want that's, to that's where communication comes in. Right, you right, know, right. You have to 
I think the I think the reason of why is what would make me go to the next level and keep seeing the person. I need a legitimate reason why. And then once you get past that, like, okay, I accept the reason why, let's work on it, and then we can work on, you know, being a better us or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Hey y'all, so people in the comments are trying to um chime in about some things. Okay. I saw one guy put a comment and somebody said they had a lot to say. And we do want, I mean, we don't have a male on here at the moment, but I mean, of course we want to hear a male's perspective. I, I, so. I see that Jay thing. I, 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 Drop it. I mean, we got to have, a, this is, we're all women on here talking. So this is, this is us talking of us being in, in like, come on, come or going up about here, real. Black men, like, like so you, you have a different perspective. Yes. Say that. Yes, say that. You know, let us let us know. I'll right. be, it, um, it would be real nice for uh it would be real nice if one of them would come up here, but I like you said, Ashley, we get a <laughs> bunch of comments and stuff or and like somebody is. say something to me afterwards and I'd be like, Why not come up here? And they'd be like, No. <laughs> no, and I'm like, What are you scared of? What are you afraid of? Like, we really want to know from your side, like it regardless of how I go and regardless, Michelle, what the Lord has taught me about guys and women what he with adam and eve or whatever the case may be it still is not the same from hearing from an actual guy it's right, right, right. it's just not the same so i be i try they be saying something and i'm yeah. like well get up here but somebody said y'all act like y'all hiring the man he should have a whole cover letter and resume yeah. just to say hello no that i think what we were saying when we were mentioning about the cover letter we didn't even say cover letter but <laughs> resume if if that's the aspect of applying for a job. Like, of course, you know, you can get jobs without sending in a resume. You can work through connections. Like I mentioned before, if somebody knows somebody, that's usually how it goes if, you know, you're yeah, not finding work. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know. The yeah, stuff. who you know. So it's just like, if you're reaching out, you're helping that person, not just <laughs> a, applying, because a, a lot of things is not, you know, literally sitting down, filling out applications. A lot of the things are online and believe it or not, some people have a hard time navigating on technology in order to do those things or they get aggravated by it and they don't even want to fill out the application. So it's not just that working with connections. There's a lot of other things that you can do, like investing. People want to start their business and, you know, maybe they don't, just don't want to do the nine to five thing. They want to do their business for themselves. So that may take whether they working with somebody else, taking a class or whatever the case may be. It's so many other things out there. So it's not just, you know, filling out an application i, I want to i okay ken campbell okay i don't i'm not sure who, who he's connected to but i want to acknowledge what he's saying um i think you read it correct. he was like y'all act like hiring men he should have a whole cover letter and resume just to say hello i think what he's referring to and he can uh verify what i'm saying i think he's referring to like uh just talking to us women people oh gotcha now okay. i'm the reason why i'm touching on that is because like i said i'm in my dating phase and guess what? He right. And I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be one of those women say, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. And I I I said I have said this to, to guys that I'm uh conversing with, um, because I converse with talk to them with a purpose. I said, um, because I, I take things slow, you know, I say, um, this is an interview. I, so when he say that, like, yeah, it is. I'm like, this is an interview, which is the, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Um, I don't care about your favorite color. I don't, I, I do care about what type of foods you like. So I can, like, we can, when I schedule, when it's my turn to do a date, you know, but um, I, the thing, the things that I do ask up front is the help can out. Is uh, are you married? Are you single? Are you black people divorced? How many kids you got? How many baby? So, yep, bam, 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 bam. Uh, yep, so and that, that helps me out to determine part, whether or not how far I want to go with you. Especially yeah. when you first meet somebody and you start talking, those are the questions that you start asking. Like on the first date, what do you do? Oh, okay, what are your hours like? Do you work all the time? Like, you ask those yes. questions. That's and, not and, like you act like we're asking for that just for people to approach us. You can approach me. But once we start getting in the conversation, I'm going to want to know more about you. I need to know who I'm talking yeah. to. Because it's our life. It's our lives. It's my life. You can't get mad about what I choose for myself. If anything, if you're saying, well, I could be good for you, Ashley, but you just so this, 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 like, okay, well, then you be that person to come along and help me to not be this, this, this. Help me relax. Like, enhance what you see i'm lacking help me and enhance that you know but i'm asking we ask guys these questions because 
we don't want to waste our time. Like you have no idea how many guys that don't wasted our time before we even got here. You know, before you even try to turn in your resume to say, hello, how you doing? Like, you don't know what done happened, what we done been through. And then y'all love to say, which this is going to be a topic. Everybody ain't like that. Every man ain't like that. Well, then go talk to your brothers. Talk to your brothers, talk to your homeboys, talk to your friends. Like, talk to all these other Black men who are doing us wrong. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's just like always, you know, I noticed that it's always like a, when, when, when they say, you know, they're not loved correctly, it's always like, I'm bringing you just me, how I am, take it or leave it. And then it's like, when the, the women, I don't think we have the privilege of just saying like, it's just me, take it or leave it. Here's my, here's the way that I act. I don't like, they say they, you know, when they get mad when women say they don't want a broke man, but a man don't want a broke woman either. If a woman- Oh, oh I was gonna get not, if they If they're not stable on their feet, you know, when they think about their mate, you know, I need somebody that's out here grinding like me. I need somebody that's doing X, Y, Z. You know, it's the same way. So it's just like the man doesn't want a woman that that doesn't have anything going for herself. You know, oh, you know, she got this many kids and all this other stuff. You know, if she is lacking or she is not at a certain level, you know, they don't want to talk to her. Or, you know, if she if she um had a, a promiscuous past and slept with this person, this person, you know, it's a problem. But if they, it's like, oh, you know, I put that all behind me now, you know, I'm just with this one right. girl. <laughs> and it's all fine. Right. It's, it's just, it's just realizing like the same thing. It's a double require. standard. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, you have to be able to provide uh, reciprocity. Like you have to be able to reciprocate these things that you're asking for. Like, it's not just the women. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but the women that I see that saying, okay, I just want you to have this. I just want you to have that. It's like they're asking for the things that they can provide too. Yes. So, yeah. And oh, oh my God. Most it's, of it's to the fact that we're like now, it's so bad. It's gotten so bad that, and I, I think I might need to work on this. Look, black men, y'all let me know. It's gotten so bad to the financially with guys that I say, look, I'll just pay for my own food. What do they call it? Dutch? Like, I'll just pay for what I do. You pay for what you do. And so with some guys who, I guess, struggling financially or whatever, they're like, oh, okay. But then I meet, and I hate, I know you're going to hate this, real men. <laughs> when I meet, when I move into real men, they be like, oh, no, they take that as an insult, like disrespectfully, like you disrespecting them, you know. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's. On the day, I always assume that I'm paying for my own food. I guess that. I mean, I, I now I, I do have that habit. I just don't have time to be like looking at you. Like when the bill comes, I don't. Yeah. I don't like that awkward moment where you're just like staring at the receipt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't like it. That's not make me too uncomfortable. I'll just pull my car and be like, so I had the salmon and the. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, that's like getting real awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I can't handle it. Right, right. I, um, but a lot of women, I don't know, that's that, that whole, because that is, that, that's a meme as well. Like that, um, don't order what you can't afford to pay for. Or don't, you know, order what you wouldn't normally do if you was by yourself or whatever, or, you know. But, okay, so what's the unanimous, like, decision can a black man be loved without money like he stuck yes or no Whitney yes Courtney absolutely my answer is yes of course he can because we've seen it we got family members but I would prefer you to take that over there you know until you get yourself yeah I personally I feel like you shouldn't even be dating until you got everything situated you know but all right so we're gonna go into the second question which is um 